An investigation for this programme reveals serious health and safety concerns at a key site in the London Olympics programme, an industrial heritage of toxicity and even radiation. This is more for news. Also tonight, is Rushdie's gong an incitement to violence? Prior to coming to do this job, I've been working as a foreign correspondent for nearly the past 10 years. Uh, I was with the BBC previously and worked for them in the Gaza Strip in the Middle East. I went and covered the beginning of the Iraq war and went back and forth to Iraq for a while for the BBC as well. And now I'm in London as of a few weeks ago and I'm taking over from Sarah Smith as the presenter of More 4 News. In the run up to being on air, it's been pretty frantic and I've been doing lots of extra publicity related things. So I've been doing podcasts for Channel 4 and for More 4 um, about my time as a correspondent on the road and how it compares to being in the studio. Okay, podcast three, frying pans and fires. Now it's a little strange to sign up to living and working in a place that you've never been to, but it can happen. But it's properly strange when that place is Afghanistan particularly when you notice that not everyone on your flight that's coming in to land at Kabul airport is actually seated. Men of all ages with beards and dressed in shower kameez are moving about the cabin like it's their living room and the flight attendants can't help because of course they're standing as well holding the doors of the overhead luggage compartments closed as you come in to land. I moved from the Intifada in Gaza to post-war Kabul in 2002 Afghanistan had just been taken over by Western forces and the Northern Alliance who'd driven out the Taliban. For me, the time had come to leave the Middle East, but I wasn't really ready to move back to the smooth pavements of the West. Occasional sojourns to London had sent me into a bit of a spin. There was too much to choose from in the supermarkets. And nothing felt urgent enough to care about. So, naturally enough, it was Afghanistan. Anyway, for now, my roaming days are over as that uh, tonight I actually start presenting more for news. Um, it's on at 8 p.m., so watch if you can bear it. It won't be perfect, but it will definitely be unpredictable and possibly fun. Great. Lovely. Thanks, yeah. Natasha. Bye. One of the major differences from being out in the field and being in the studio is that suddenly Hello. Uh, the way that you look becomes much more important because often when you're out in the field you're only on air for a few minutes and people take into account the fact that you've probably just driven four hours to get to where you are and there might be other things that are um, forcing you not to pay a lot of attention to whether or not your hair's done. Whereas here, the way that you look, what your hair looks like, it's all significant in the sense that you don't want people to be looking, oh, hasn't she got a nice necklace on, or I wish she'd do something with her hair. If they're thinking about those kinds of things, then, then they're probably not thinking about what you're saying. And there's a whole kind of army of people here who help you to achieve that. I used to be really good at putting on makeup in moving cars. That was one of my specialties, especially mascara. Although sometimes I had to wait at traffic lights for mascara. Yeah, so this is a new experience, being um, fussed over in such a gorgeous manner. Um, it's taken a bit, of, a bit of getting used to, but we're doing it all right. I've had two weeks of it now. I mean, I, I suppose I've never really thought that much about what's involved with being a, a presenter before, but um, you really have to think on your feet and you have to think about lots of things at the same time. And I think as a foreign correspondent, you tend to just talk about what's going on around you. But with this, it's much more, it's all happening inside your head and you have to uh, try and stay one step ahead of everything and, it, and time moves very fast on TV so even though it's a half hour bulletin you feel like it's over in 15 seconds. That's it from us tonight but our website is 24 hours you should be seeing the address on your screen now. Good night. Okay. Going. Uh, looking down at your papers and uh, animate. Okay we're off you Joe. Seas rolling. Okay well done everybody thank you. Thank you. In the past, there has been this thing of being a career presenter, so you just become very good at presenting the news and you become very slick and polished in that regard, but you don't necessarily do a lot of uh, field work or journalism um, at the same time. And I guess I've kind of come in the other way in the sense that I've been a journalist and a correspondent in the field and I've come into the, um, into the studio f from uh, down that route. Um, I guess I'm hoping that, for me, I'm certainly hoping that that's the right route to take for me in the sense that it does give you confidence, it means that you know a lot about the stories that you're talking about um, and hopefully that means that you ask the right questions and you have a, 
broader sense of the world and news than you might have otherwise if you were if you'd only ever done studio based work so I guess my advice would be to you know to be a good journalist to work on your journalism and make sure that you um, you know you you do the basics first um, and then start thinking about your hair and makeup and whether or not you should be a presenter. <laughs>